Hi, my name is Brian Akins. I'm the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission. Normally our commission opens up the Ojai Jail for Ojai Day each year, but alas, that's not going to happen. So we decided to do it this way. I'm standing here at the intersection of the walkway going down to the Ojai Jail and what's now the Ventura Ojai Bike Trail, which used to be the railroad that came in going off to my right for about another three quarters of a mile. The Ojai City Jail or Libby Park Jail, as it used to be known, that you'll see behind me. This is Ojai's second of four jails to date. The first jail was a wood jail built by Andy Van Curren in 1874. It was situated behind what is now the Bank of America. Andy was also the town undertaker, so he stored his coffin in the jail also. A new jail was built when a dispute arose with Andy refusing to give up his wooden jail. It now resides behind Cold Springs Tavern on the San Marcos Pass. We're walking down the pathway to the Ojai Jail, as you can see that behind me. In 1928, the Ojai City Council petitioned the Ventura County Board of Supervisors to build a city jail. Pretty good deal getting the county to pay for the city jail. To enable its build and set its location, on August 13, 1928, the city deeded the land across from the railroad, which we just left. The jail was built in 1929, designed by highly respected Santa Paula architect, Roy Wilson, known for other important buildings here in town. The structure, as you can see, is 23 feet wide, 15 feet deep, 10 feet high. It is constructed of eight inch thick concrete with steel rod enforcements in it. Let's go take a look inside. We're gonna go inside now and see if uh, the temperature actually does cool. It's 101 degrees outside. Coming in the jail, you see a couple different things. If you look to your left, you'll see that, yes, they had a shower. They had four different cells if you go from left to right. Each cell had two bunks in it. You can see that these bunks were bunk bed essentially with the eight beds hung by the chains. Um, you can also see if you peek right over here that they had their own toilet and sink. Today we call that in sweep. Uh, Big glass was this original jail. Well, when it was landmark, they actually came in and cleaned it up a bit. You can see that these bars are different than these bars. Uh, each year, as I said, we open the jail on Ojai Day. A uh, favorite photo of the families that come and uh, see this is for the parents to take pictures of their kids locked up, and then of course they walk away. Or the kids to take parent pictures of their parents in there. Uh, one year we were doing this and I actually had the city manager, the city attorney, and a city councilman all in the same jail. Should have taken a photo. If you want to know how straight they are, listen. Yeah, I do that, and that scares everybody. And then we lock them up. So, one of the most interesting artifacts that we find in the jail that's uh, been preserved over the years is the graffiti. Again, this graffiti dates back to the 60s. If you come on in, you can see here's Life Stinks Today, Jeff Goldberg, 68. Here's Kane, he's marking off the uh, days that he's been in here. Here's Life Stinks Today, James Hong. Hopefully it's not the James I know. I don't think he was alive in 68. If you look at this, Sergeant Meadows, Officer Clyde, Crash Cop Benoit is a lot of different things. That's dated February 17, 1969. And here's the last, later one. I started from the top, now I'm falling to the end. I'm destined to be destined for my life will never end. Carry is my name and faith my only nation. Time and space my dwelling place and death my destination. Carry Donat O'Connor. No date shock. So let's go over into the other next room and see what we find. Hello, here we are in the fourth cell. Don't know if this was number one or number four. Come on in and join me. Got some interesting pieces here. If you look way up there, we have Eddie Prater, who put that in as September 1st, 1969. And this is the piece I love. This is Clyde's dream car for chasing dopers. And you can see that is a 60s air hot rod. 
Now Clyde, for I wasn't here in 69, but or in this area, Clyde was one of the police officers. And they're saying, yep, that's what he got when he was chasing those guys. So again, fun little place. If you take a look over here, you can see the bed. Normally they had mattresses on it. Here's the sink. You can see the sink up close. So people often ask us, so what happened with these people? Well, during the daytimes, oftentimes they would go out and do chores around the park or in the city. And then at nighttime, they were brought back here. And then when dinner time happened, they were, a patrolman would come over, pick them up, walk them over to the city. They would have uh, dinner at a diner, and then they would bring them back and they would close the door for the night. Just like that. Locked up. Now people wondered, so what happens if there's an emergency? Well, there used to be a single line wire that went from the jail to the city hall to the police station, which was where the OI Board of Realtors is on OI Avenue. If there were problems, they called them and somebody came on down. Other than that, they were on their own. In the late 90s, a landscape architect hired by the city described this building, dear sweet building, as atrocious and recommended knocking it down. The Historic Preservation Commissioner, Betty McAllister, was horrified. She said, it just felt it was a part of our history. As detailed in a city proclamation, after over 10 years of work and restoration, the Ojai City Jail was designated Ojai's Historic Landmark Number 12. Much thanks to that on that goes to Betty McAllister and the Ohio Historic Preservation Commission, the city of Ohio, and several other important organizations and individuals. On September 24, 2002, the city of Ohio City Council granted the Ohio Jail to be the city of Ohio's number 12 landmark. And we honor that move today.